This problem is number 23 from chapter 5 of the Atkins textbook. So we're told that cytochrome C receives electrons from reduced cytochrome C and transmits them to molecular oxygen with formation of water. Um, part A of the question asks for the chemical equation in an acidic environment. So to begin writing the chemical equation, we must first recognize that this looks like a redox reaction just because these electrons are being transferred from one thing to the next. So it's probably a good idea to separate this chemical equation into the reduction and the oxidation half reactions. And remember that reduction oxidation um, requires a transfer of electrons. So reduction involves the gain of electrons and oxidation involves loss of electrons. So let's turn back to the problem one more time and look at the wording to see where exactly these electrons come from and where they go. So cytochrome C gets these electrons and transmits them to molecular oxygen, O2. So molecular oxygen is getting these electrons, which means that it's a gain of electrons. So a reduction has to involve O2. So O2 is getting these electrons which I'm just going to abbreviate with E minus, and looks like it's going to form water. Um, and we have to balance this reaction here. So in order to make water, you also need protons, so hydrogen atoms. And to finish this off, we're going to need to balance the overall equation. So I'm going to add a 2 here to balance the oxygens, and then 4 here and 4 here. Um, so the cell potential of this reaction is going to be 0.81 volts. Um, so this is from Atkins table 5.2. And now we're going to look at the oxidation reaction. So it looks like this cytochrome C reduction is going to give up its electrons and get them over to cytochrome C. So we begin with the abbreviation for the reduced version of cytochrome C. And then the electrons are going to be transferred over to normal cytochrome C. And the cell potential for this reaction is negative 0.25 volts. Again, this is from table 5.2. So in order to combine these two reactions into one overall reaction, we need the number of electrons to be the same on the left and the right. So over here, we have four electrons. So we need to balance this by adding a four, which means that four is added to everything else so that it balances. Finally, to write all of this together as one reaction, we're going to take everything on the left, write it down. So O2 plus four electrons plus four protons plus four cytochrome C reduced. And then everything on the right side. So that all goes to two water plus four cytochrome C plus four electrons. And then what's nice is that your electrons on both sides will cancel. So that leaves a final overall reaction of O2 plus four H plus plus four cytochrome C reduced goes to two H2O plus four cytochrome C. So you may notice that there is actually four hydrogen atoms right here. And that it's perfectly okay because we're doing this in an acidic environment. So it makes sense as to why these H pluses just don't cancel out. So here's the answer for part A. Now that we have the balanced chemical equation, let's move on to part B where it's asking for the uh, cell potential of the entire cell 
delta G and the value of K, which is the equilibrium constant. So I've rewritten everything here. Um, so let's begin by finding the standard potential of the cell. In order to do that, we can just take the two standard potentials of the half reactions and add them together. So we're going to have 0.81 volts minus 0.25 volts, which turns out to be 0 0.56 volts. And that's for the entire cell when considering both reactions. So for delta RG, uh, we can use the formula delta RG is equal to negative VF e of the cell. Um, and this is also from Atkins as well. Um, so V here is basically the stoichiometric coefficient of electrons in the matching half reactions. In other words, it's how many electrons are being transferred. Um, so if we look again at our reduction oxidation formulas, we can see that four electrons are involved in this reaction. So V is going to be equal to four. Um, F is Faraday's constant. And E of the cell is something we just calculated, so that's going to be 0.56 volts. So let's put it all together, so it's going to be negative 4. Faraday's constant is equal to 96,485 coulombs per mole. And we have 0.56 volts from our answer from before. Um, so it's really nice to uh, make sure that our units cancel. So I'm going to change the volts here into the standard SI unit. And that's just going to be joules per coulomb. So we can see that the coulombs cancel. And once we calculate this all out, we get negative 2,000, 200,000, 16, 216, excuse me, 216,126.4 joules per mole, which is equal to negative 216 kilojoules per mole with rounding. Very last thing to do here is to find the value of K. Um, and the nice formula for this is LNK is equal to V, of the cell all over our T. Again, from that Atkins textbook. Um, so V again didn't change, it's still four because four electrons are involved in the reaction. And then we have Faraday's constant, 96,485 coulombs per mole. The E of the cell, which is 0 0.56 joules per coulomb. And then R, 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. And the temperature of this um, is going to be at 25 degrees Celsius, which is equal to 298 degrees Kelvin, which goes right here. Um, K is a dimensionless unit, it's the equilibrium constant. So let's go and make sure that all of our units cancel. So your Kelvin cancels, moles cancels, coulombs cancels, and joules cancel. Perfect. So after we calculate this all out, um, L and K, don't forget the natural log here, is equal to 87.2279. Um, go ahead and take E of both sides, and K is going to be equal to 7.6 times 10 to the 37th no units.